Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got my generator here that's not working at the minute. I'm trying to work out what the problem with it is. And this is a GenSafe generator. It's sold by a chain of stores called Total Tools here in New South Wales in Australia. And it's, uh, it's a inverter generator. It puts out 1600 running watts and it's got a Yamaha engine in it, which is the reason that I bought it. It's got a Yamaha MZ80 engine in it. Um, and being an inverter generator, it has been really good for when we've had blackouts. We can still run the TV and things inside the house and it's not a problem. But um, a couple of weeks ago I was using it and um, all of a sudden the motor was still going and I had a, an alarm come up here which was an AC reset light and uh, I haven't been able to get it to turn off. I've stopped the generator and I've... Uh, uh, started again and plugged different appliances into it and I haven't been able to get the AC to reset on it so I'm going to try a trick which I um, saw on YouTube actually and just to see if I may be able to get it working. Anyway first thing I think I'll do is start it up and I'll show you um, the fault with the light. Okay I've got the generator running now and you can see down here that there's a red flashing light which says overload alarm and it came on, we were watching TV and I had a, a single bowl light plugged in as well and that was working fine and we had a fan plugged in and after about 10 minutes or so the generator was still running but the power went out and I think there was a problem with the motor on the fan um, got overloaded or something like that and it caused this fault and I've been trying to work out how to fix it and the only thing I've managed to find is that you need to plug a device into the AC outlet into here and then spin it slowly or turn it so it produces a small AC current that goes back into the generator which resets the fields on it. It, it sounds a bit sort of make-believe but it's worth a shot because I really don't have any other option. There is no button that I can press to reset anything. so. Um, I'm going to try that. So what I have is I have my power drill here which I'm going to plug in and then I'm going to use my battery powered drill to spin this in reverse and that should send a current back down into the generator and it may just kick start it and get rid of this fault. So let's try it. Okay, well, that didn't work at all. The light stayed on. And there's no green light actually here, which is the output indicator. Um, so I think there's another problem somewhere. And as I said, there's no reset button anywhere on this front panel. So what I'm going to do is actually take some screws out of here and take this panel off and just see what lies underneath this panel. I've taken the sides off now and I can't... I can't get this front panel out. There seems to be some hidden bolts somewhere. But I can see that there's a circuit board and stuff in here. And um, I'm just wondering if there's maybe a fuse or something in there somewhere. Anyway, I might go and see if I can find the manual or the booklet that came with it. Maybe that has some guidance for me. Okay, well I've been digging a bit further and I can see now into this electronic module here and I can see it down behind here now that it's uh, something's burnt out in here so I'm going to try and get this um, whole panel off and then I can show you exactly what the damage is I think. Okay well I finally managed to get the board out of the generator and this is what it looks like it's got a big heat sink on one side and then it's got the circuitry here and what I've noticed straight away is that there's been uh, a fire, it's got too hot and if I just go down into here there seems to be a resistor or a capacitor or something there that's burnt out and caught fire and that's actually cooked that circuit board. You can see the smoke damage to that yellow thing on the side there. Now I don't know exactly what it is, I don't know whether it's a resistor if it was, maybe I could just cut it out and replace it. I don't know whether it's the top one or the bottom one, so it's a bit hard to see. Um, so, what to do, what to do. The trouble is, uh, is this GenSafe generator, I did mention earlier that I thought it was sold by Total Tools. I've just checked and it's actually sold by a company called Sydney Tools. 
so GenSafe is just a generic name. It's a Chinese-made um, generator, and I can't see any part numbers on this particular um, circuit thing at all, and so I can't really go and try and find any replacements. I have... Um, gone on the internet I can find something similar that's got the same sort of pins in the same spot but whether the electronics are the same I don't know um, it's a bit of a, a bit of a chance if you go and buy it I, you know there's something that I think looks the same in China on Alibaba but it's still like $250 with $100 delivery locally I can find something out of a Yamaha generator that looks almost the same but I don't know if it would be exactly the same and, and the price on that one was about seven or eight hundred dollars so I don't think I have really any option um, to try and fix this I think it's just going to be too expensive and too risky to try and spend a lot of money in fixing it which is a shame because the generator was I think twelve hundred dollars when I bought it I did buy it uh, just over five years ago and the machine actually had a five-year warranty it ran out about 12 months ago um, and the machine hasn't done a lot of work it's just a standby machine in uh, the garage for when the blackouts happen and I've done maybe 20 or 30 hours on it and, um, and now this circuit board's actually died so so that's not good that's not good at all so my option is now is do I go and buy another cheaper generator or do I lash out and buy something more expensive Right, I've got my inverter board back out in the workshop and I've just been scratching away at the area where the fire was in here where it got very hot and I can see that what I thought was a resistor or something in here which is what I'm pointing to now with the tweezers I think this is actually a thermal fuse I can see that it's got two metal caps on the end of it and it doesn't look like the middle of it has been blown out or destroyed so I'm going to check actually whether that still works and the best way of doing that is just with my uh, multimeter that I've got here and I've sent it to the continuity setting and if I actually go on to the two metal parts on the end of that I can actually hear the continuity beep so that tells me that that if it is a fuse is still actually working that that's okay so I think that might be all right. Um, what I can also notice is, I'll just point down to here, there are two little wires that are sticking out of the circuit board. And I think what this was, was a thermistor or a thermal resistor. And I'll put a, a shot up of what I think it was um, to show you. And these things are a circular piece of epoxy and it also has carbon black in there that acts again a bit like a fuse if you like that if it gets too hot the epoxy melts and the carbon burns and then it opens circuits where I'm pointing to down here so all I've left with now is two wires that are sticking up and just for the sake of the exercise I guess just to have a bit of a play around to see whether it would work I'm thinking of just soldering those two points there back together and putting the machine back together and actually test whether this inverter board may work again. I've got the module just sitting in there at the minute I've got the earth reconnected and all the pins I think have been connected so 
We'll start it up and see. Now, if it works, this green light here is supposed to illuminate and come on and stay on. If the uh, problem isn't fixed and the AC isn't working, then this overload alarm red LED will light up. So tell me, what do you think the chances are it's going to work? I don't know. I reckon it's about 95% that it's not going to work. I don't think that it's going to be that easy to fix it like that. But anyway, we'll try it. So we'll, um, we'll give it a bash. Uh, make sure my switches are on, 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 on. And we'll start her up. It's, uh, it's still not fixed. Well, I was pretty sure that that simple fix that I tried on the inverter board wouldn't work. And of course it didn't. And now I'm still stuck with a dead generator. In the last week or so, I've been doing a lot of internet searching to try and find replacement units for this. And as mentioned, I did find some in China on Alibaba that physically looked the same but I don't think they're going to work. And one of the things I found out is that the four pin connector up here actually controls the speed sensor or the controller on top of the carburetor on my Yamaha engine. And that would lead me to think that unless I actually buy the right module that it won't actually talk to the engine. So there might be a problem with speed control and things like that. Um, and even, you know, taking the punt on buying something from China could cost me three or four hundred dollars and it may still not work. So I don't think I want to do that. I did also find a helpful YouTube video on a person that had a Yamaha, a genuine Yamaha generator that had also blown up the inverter board. And uh, I saw them fixing it and I noticed a part number that was stamped on the side and I googled the part number and actually found the board but of course here in Australia they're not available and I did find two in the US and to get them shipped to Australia was going to be about $825 or something like that so I don't think that's really worth taking a punt as well. I'm not that good with electronics that I really want to pull apart this whole circuit board and as you can see it's all been embedded in this black resin stuff that um, I don't even know how you would get that out to try and get to the circuits and I don't know enough about circuitry and components to be able to fix it myself so I may be able to track down somebody that um, would be willing to have a go um, so that may be a possibility. I think the other option I have really is just to keep an eye out on uh, eBay and Facebook marketplace and maybe try and track down the similar generator that has um, the engine is blowing up or something in it, but the electronics might be okay and then I could pull the inverter board out and swap it over. But really to do that I'd have to try and find a replacement that was sort of next to nothing to make it worthwhile. I really need to source another generator. I've got a lot of um, sensitive printing equipment over in the shed there that I'm still using that I need to have powered up if there's a blackout. And we've had lots, um, this is summer for us and we have lots of summer storms and the power is always going out. So my quest will start in the next video when I try and decide on what I'm going to replace this generator with. And I'm faced with two choices really, is to go down the path of buying another cheap Chinese generator or to spend a lot of money and buy a name brand Japanese generator. And I'm not really too sure which way I'm going to go, but that will be in the next video. But anyway, that'll do us for today. I do appreciate everybody watching the video and supporting the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.